Hey everyone, my name is Lance and I'm going to show you this bow and arrow project made of craft sticks and a straw. Of all the projects that I've come up with and over all the years that I've taught these kinds of things to kids, this project has remained a student favorite. So I'm excited to show you how it's built and the science behind it. Um, so let's just jump right in. First, glue three cubes onto one stick like this, and then glue another stick on top of those. Then glue on the limbs to the bow. These are two more craft sticks with one more cube glued in between at the end. And the limbs are attached at about a 45 degree angle, but it doesn't have to be very precise as long as it's not totally square or totally flat and straight. Next, reinforce the limbs by gluing craft sticks across the joint right here, like this. And the easiest way to do this is to apply glue on the ends of a craft stick first, and then put it across that joint right there so it forms these really um, narrow triangles. And then glue a third stick that connects the other two, just like that. This structure is going to prevent the limbs from folding inward under the force of the rubber band. So repeat on the other side for added strength. Okay, the bow is almost done. Next, you'll need to glue two small pieces of craft sticks onto the very ends of the bow with the stick piece pointing toward the front. Okay, the bow is done. Now we need to string it with a rubber band. And to do this, what you'll need to do is hook the rubber band over that piece of craft stick that was last added, and then give the rubber band a single twist. Then stretch it out and pull it over the other side. And after you do this, you may need to just pinch the rubber band and hitch it up over the ends, just like that. And the reason why it's twisted is because now the rubber band overlaps here in the center so that the arrow always hooks onto both strands. Okay, to make the arrow, first we're going to add a little bit of weight to one end, and I like to use a piece of glue stick for that. But you can also use a pencil eraser or anything else that's soft and kind of heavy and rubbery. Um, this can fit inside your straw, or you can just tape it onto the tip. Okay, now on the other end, we need to wrap this in tape before we cut the knock of the arrow. Um, this is the part that is going to fit onto the rubber band bowstring. And the reason why it's taped first is because if we just cut the knock into the plastic straw, the plastic can splinter pretty easily over time and the tape helps to reinforce it. So to cut the knock, what you'll need to do is pinch the end of the straw flat, and then with scissors, you're going to cut out a V shape. So I'll cut on this side first, turn it, and then cut the other side. So you get this V shape at the tip of the arrow, and what this leaves you with is a notch, or the knock of the arrow that's going to fit over the bowstring. So the easiest way for kids to load the bow is to first hold it so that the front is facing up, and then put the back of the arrow through the middle of the front of the bow so that it's resting on top of this cube that's in the center here. Um, that'll free up their hand so that they can come around and pinch the knock of the arrow around the rubber band bowstring. And now they're ready to fire. All you gotta do is grip the bow with your other hand, pull back as much as you want, and let go. <laughs> oh. There is a little bit of a learning curve for some kids to shoot this, so um, give them some time to practice. So first things first, before getting into the science of it, um, just a note that this bow does not work like a real bow, just so that there are no misconceptions if you're teaching this to kids. Um, a real bow gets its energy by bending the actual wooden limbs. Um, in our example, of course, the bow is getting its energy from stretching out a rubber band. So that's a pretty key difference, um, as well as how the bow is fired. Um, so just make sure to clarify those things up front so that kids don't have any misconceptions about how real bows work. So the science of this. Um, first thing is the structure of the bow is comprised of all of these triangles here. Um, and triangles, of course, are a really strong shape that's used all the time in engineering, and that's because they do not change their shape when you apply compression 
force to it. Um, so here's one triangle that I have. If you press on it, the triangle is not going to change its shape because it distributes that force evenly throughout the whole shape. Whereas by contrast, here's a square that I have, and if you push on one corner of the square, it flattens out into a diamond. Um, so that's why the bow is made of these triangles. And if you want to build a bigger bow, that's fine, but it needs to be supported with those triangular structures throughout. Now, even more important than the design of the bow is the design of the arrow. Um, and there are two key variables here that you can experiment with. Um, the first is the length of the arrow, and the second is how much weight is at the tip. Um, so the length of the arrow matters because that's what determines how far you can draw the arrow back. So in this example that I showed you, um, if I pull it back too far, then the arrow is released from the bow and it's not going to fire very well. Um, so in this example, I'm actually not utilizing the maximum amount of energy that I could from this rubber band. By contrast, however, if the arrow is really, really long, you might be able to pull it back farther, but it's going to be heavier and there's going to be more surface area that is going to create drag. So there's a balance. You want the arrow to be long enough that you can draw it back to the maximum amount that the rubber band will stretch, but not any longer because otherwise there's extra weight and drag that's going to slow it down and not make it shoot as far as it could. The second variable is the weight at the tip of the arrow. Uh, some weight is necessary because otherwise if you just throw an empty straw, um, it's too light and the air resistance around it is going to drag along the sides of the straw and slow it down. Um, and also because um, it's so light, any variation in how you throw it or any little bit of breeze is going to tilt it off course. So it's not gonna go straight either. So adding some weight to the tip of the arrow helps it overcome that air resistance because now there is some mass. And once the arrow is fired, that mass generates momentum, which helps pull the rest of the arrow through the air, overcoming that air resistance. And because that mass is at the tip of the arrow, it helps make it go straight because it is like pulling the rest of the arrow behind it. But there's a balance in how much weight you need at the tip of the arrow. Um, too little weight and it won't be able to overcome that air resistance very easily. It'll still get slowed down. And if there's too much weight, then the energy from the rubber band is going to be wasted just overcoming that inertia, um, just getting the arrow to start moving in the first place. So if you're teaching this to students, definitely emphasize experimenting with those two variables, the length and the weight. And finally, there are a lot of ways that you can build out this activity. Um, obviously, kids can make lots of arrows after they find the best design. Um, they can make a little quiver out of paper to hold all of their arrows. Um, and of course, you can create games like aiming at a target or shooting for distance. Um, it's a super fun activity, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.